come to an end. Uh, okay, sorry, please. What yeah. inspires? What inspires me? My environment, my environment, my my experiences with um, a conversation with people. Because just like how I was having the conversation, an idea just popped up now that we're talking about. Okay, the next project is about tender men. Tender men. So you can see it, it uh, and um, like uh, in my environment and conversation with people. Uh, my environment, my okay, walking through traffic, and I might hear something. And it's just like the idea for this exhibition. Men love flowers. If I saw it on someone's WhatsApp status. It just said men loves flowers and I was like oh wow this was I love this thing way back, back yeah. wow I think I need to put a body of works together with figures and flowers to tell the story. story so that's where I get my inspiration from thank you sir okay. can, I, can I ask a question yes well, actually, um, so I mean obviously as on the curator side um, I always have I always have challenges with traditional Raji collectors who find it very difficult to um, accept your experimental series, <laughs> right? Um, and and I, I, I throw it also to the artists in the room because this trap or cage that some of us, I'm not one of them, but the idea that an artist must paint or, sh or express in the same way I want you to. I want both of you to actually comment on this. So there's a school that says an artist who keeps painting the same thing over and over and over and over and over again is is poor, is lazy, is not good art. And then the victims of these conversations usually are the Abladi lovers and Murano Yelamis of this of, of our world, who, as far as I'm concerned, are legends, like king legends. Then. The artists who have such amazing dexterity that, like you, like Femi, like Rom, where it's today, where in one climb and in another moment, where in a completely different climb, you almost cannot pair the paintings or expressions together. I believe that both are valid and correct. I would like to know your thoughts on this. And, um, and I would also like to ask, especially Olumide or not if fair, if there's any such thing as painting over and over again, even though the naked eye sees similarities and sees, you know, sees the same, but what is anything the same? No, no. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I have to go first. Yeah. Um, I would digress a little bit. Um, in terms of, let me use um, 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 car makers for example. Toyota should have just stick to Camry. <laughs> And not decide to um, stretch to Corolla, um, Land Cruiser. They should have just stick to Camry. In terms of in terms of art, I believe that it has to do. The definition of art is the expression of one's innermost feeling. I can decide tomorrow to splash water on black canvas, and the result I call it art. You know, it when we in in terms of art training on its own and you do you are not being trained to be like to be a figure painter you are being trained to explore everything and you decide to choose your um, um where you have more strengths that doesn't mean you have to negate or neglect the other part once in a while you can decide okay i am people know me for painting figures i can decide i want to paint cisk painting or I decide I want to paint landscape, but you still know this artist that his major strength is being a figurative painter. That doesn't take the fact that he is not skillful in producing abstract work, he is not skillful in producing watercolors, is not he, even st some painters still have the capability of being sculptors. Mr. Olumide is an example. A, a painter and a sculptor. Some are painters, they are sculptors, they are still photographers. Some are the, the same still graphic designers. That doesn't take the fact that they should be, it should be one, a one-way thing. And there is this saying that every, for every form of art you produce mm -hmm. has its own market or has its own um, fans or clients. And 
what you don't like someone else might like it and even when the person start giving review you will be shocked as well but i don't like this i just like some will tell you that who in this world will tell you that i love jazz but they prefer pop so it's everybody's um decision and nobody should you um, i don't think that an artist should be limited to a particular style or a particular um, um branch of art Art, the artist should be allowed as far the artist is original he knows what he or she the, the, the artist know what he or she is doing i think that i think that should be the main thing that should be considered not the artist being seen as a confused person because that's what a lot of people the artist is confused doesn't know because we work with our mood at times i can decide to do okay um interesting i i um i come into this from a, a very a somewhat similar but almost different uh, point of view so uh first of all i'm not trained for, I'm, I'm not school ed educated not formally. yeah i'm not formally trained as an artist and i also think that uh, one one it's it's very easy to fall into as an artist um the commodification of your work which is um, why you, you tend to see people paint a certain way for most of their career. And I don't think that there's um, some, there's any, um, there's, I, I don't think that there's, a, there's any one way to be a human being, right? Yeah. Like where, even as humans, we're, we're a lot of things. Um, so personally, to me, I, I, I think that if I, um, do one thing for all of my life than i've i've failed personally right um but i do think that um as an artist it's 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 good when like so like moraino for example i if i have money i'll always buy i always buy work from him because his work stands out right so you see a moraino you know that that's a moraino um and that's what his practice is right um, so there are people in that bucket that I will, if that's what they do, then that's what they do. And there's mm. nothing wrong yeah. with that. And then it's also very possible to be an artist whose life's work will be experimentation. Who's, um, who's like, you're not settled. I'm, I'm going to do this. So personally, for example, myself. I'm always thinking of different things. So, and I've asked myself <laughs> this question a couple of times, and it's, it's, it's interesting that Ogoma asked the question because like, at times I ask myself, it, is the reasonable thing to do to have a style? Or is the reasonable thing to do not to, to create work, to create. right? So that's what I, that's what I think. Mm. And then if, as an artist, the primary thing is to create work that speaks to people. It's as good as being able to write a telenovela and an action movie and something else, right? That now becomes the test of your capacity as a writer, yeah. right? So the same thing I look at in terms of practice as an artist, right? Yeah. So to say, okay, you know what? I'm thinking of something and I want to do it in an abstract manner because I think that that might be the most effective mm -hmm. way to channel pass, what yeah, it is I want to say. And then if there's something else that I'm thinking about, so like, for example, presently, I've been thinking about seascapes, right? And I'm thinking that maybe that's the next thing I'm going to do. So would you now say that because I've developed this style in a different sort of, like, so in figurative, like this is your own style. There are many ways to be a figurative painter. Sure. Does that now mean that I should not be able to, because the work keeps like, the more you experiment, the more the work channels you to a different mm -hmm. point from point. where you are. And I think that, you know, not being stuck at where you started the journey is very important. Or not being stuck at what you thought was, okay, this is the high point of my career and I'm going to substantiate this thing. I'm going to milk it to, to the last, like the last drop, right? So there are different ways. Sometimes you have a garden with one plant. Sometimes you have a beautiful garden that has different things. Mm -hmm. Those two people are still gardeners. So mm -hmm. that's, that's how I see it. But I, 
are more interested in people who have blossoms and different things in their in their gardens <laughs> than people who have just i mean and it's good like if you're going to be that guy be that guy and then that's who you are it doesn't negate your work right. if you are going to be this guy it doesn't mean you're confused it means you're tending to a different set of things and there's beauty in that mm -hmm. yeah. so that's that's my own take Mr. Oli Midi. I believe that in the contemporary time, is to a large extent both tied to contemporary artists. You know, and uh, there is this um, burden of expectation that is constantly um, um, imposed on you whether you like it or not. It's more easier for older artists um, to practice a particular style for a stretch of time. It's more um, frowned upon when the younger artist does that, uh, because mm. also the the the, um, the viewers or the art community, especially the um, the people in the art business, um, they kind of also to an large extent put uh, expectation on the artist um, and expect you that you, you have a, a body of work and you go even. Another body of work. I mean, similar body of work. And if I ask you, uh, when are you going to show something new? Yeah. You know, what so else are you bringing to the that table? That constantly put pressure on the artist. They may not consciously, consciously be doing that, but it puts a, a lot of body on contemporary artists. So what I, what I've done over the years is just to continue to mind my own artists and to make sure that whatever I do does not violate my individuality. Yeah. My own individuality is to be able to. Explain Fan and to to um, conceptualize different materials of human experience and to make them into my practices. My other the other artist may want to just want to do what he's doing mm -hmm. and to over a period of time. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, what we need to be looking at is um, how do we better express ourselves. Um, somebody might be a, a monogamist, another person is a polygamist, and the ability to yeah. be able to to whatever you do, to be at, to be at it for a, a reasonable stretch of time, because you cannot basically convince um, people on what you are confused of. Okay. You have to be able to stand at it, and people know that yeah. you are seeing something. So I've been able to ex use different materials over time, and I change my materials okay. evolve. Mm -hmm. And whatever whatever the material evolve, somehow maybe because I don't know, maybe I'm special. <laughs> but I, I believe that once you you constantly be at something for a period of time, mm. people will begin to want to listen to you more mm. yeah. than when you immediately switch. It's yeah. just natural. Yeah. So I walked into a gallery uh, last year, and the gallery was asking me, "Oh, no, baby, I expect you know your new your you know, what are you been working on? We, we are expecting you another sort of exhibition from you." Because we are expecting something new, and I looked at her and I said, why, why, why are you looking for something new? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told her, why are you looking for something new? It's always a problem mm -hmm. because people are constantly looking for something new, yeah. mm -hmm. and so it's, it's, it's the artist's responsibility to not be um, confused or to not allow the dictate of the pressure that is on you to mm -hmm. to to negotiate your expression. It just constantly do what you are doing. It might be hard, I mean, for people to begin to mm -hmm. consider your work, or just be at it, and over time, you begin to hear what you say, and that is what I do. Okay. Cool. So I, I have a question, and this is to flip um, what Ugoma has asked to the pool who, so I think that there's a balance in the room between collectors and um, an artist, right? So the question now is, because at the end of the day, um, art, which is what I was trying to say earlier on, it's, it's been commodified, right? And then the reason why these things come up is because there's a market, and then the market supply and demand, demand. right? And the market is demanding for a kind of, uh, I mean, we want something new, we want something new, we want something new. So I think the question should be one, what is, what is it in an artist's practice from an expectation point of view, that actually 
demands of you to demand of the artist that I want to see something different rather than I want to see more of yourself in the work. It might look similar. I mean, there are a couple of people who have, I mean, people have everyone who's more than two in their house. But it's the same thing now when you think about the fact that because it's a, the M1 who, or big names have become big names, so there's a commodity appeal to it. But when you think about from a practice point of view, like the, we're, we're all in this room right now, we can see 10 Rajis on the wall. Very similarly painted works, right? What's, you, you get what I'm trying to say? If Raji paints something similar next year, to this it's it's new raji it's just raji that is similar like it's new from a freshness point of view but it's just raji that is similar to what raji has been doing right so my own thinking is if you're always going to demand that somebody creates something new what does that what does new even mean to you that is asking the question right because this 2022 raji 2021 there's there's what's the apart from the expression or, or from the narrative that has mm -hmm. informed this body of work technique might have improved but you can't tell from a visually if you see this raji uh, you see a raji of like 2014 you can tell that it's the same artist so what's what's pushing and this is me asking people in the room what's pushing you to ask these questions when the thing that you should be asking about is the integrity of the artist and the integrity of the work that has been produced so it'll be interesting to I'm looking at you, sir. <laughs> Greg, I can't I'm happy to answer this question. Yeah. And I'm going to say something, but I, I don't count because I'm not just a collector. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. In between. I'm, I'm yeah, a bit, yeah. And, and thank, thank you for answering those questions because we've actually poured onto the a very important, very, very, very important and potentially dangerous territory. Yeah. So please, collectors. And lovers and demanders of things from galleries and galleries. <laughs> 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 Sit down. Answer. Please, I want to as quickly as you all can. Okay, so I can show I I can tune in, Bobo, Daffid, you I'll, know, I'll Greg. Put it, I'll put it this way, right? And the question is, not to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. the gallerist and the dealers of collectors define Right. They tell them what to go into and what to acquire at some point, even if you're starting out. So, who is putting the pressure on who? The real question is it the middleman that is saying this is what you should get now, or is it the, yeah. the collector that is well collected over years? That is a different stage in, it, in its own point of view. So, my question is you, how are you pushing collectors to get certain kind of work, and how do, how do you think that has influenced them? I'll answer the doctor. Let's all answer. No, no, you know, I, you, know I, you know I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm ready. So, well, so just to jump in, right? Now, I'll start with your definition, right, of what is art, right? I mean, you start out with a very, very individualistic expression, right? That's art. What is sold is something else. Yeah. So there's a danger in sort of like conflating the two things. An artist, in my sort of like sense of it, produces art. What someone else buys is dependent on, you know, Marketing much, forces. much different yeah. things. Now, somebody who is buying art, I think, may be doing it for, you know, different reasons. reasons. Uh, if you like to advise them to buy it, they might have had and I think this is probably the, the purest and perhaps the most naive and in some ways maybe the most sincere uh, form of uh, collector is somebody who is moved by the art in ways that reflect the artist's own undertaking, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for that, let's call it pure buying, right? For, for that pure buying, it doesn't matter whether the work was done in. 2014, it doesn't, there's no reference point in terms of you know, when it's new or whatever. It's, it has had that effect on them. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, 
the pressures, right, um, come from, I think, a very, very different place uh, from the issue of, you know, like the artist's fundamental undertaking. Um, and, you know, and it cuts both ways, right? Uh, so there's, there's a signature. So if you're buying something that's, uh, you know, commodified, there's a signature, right? All dollar bills look the same, right? right um, sure. And so if you're buying, it, if, if it's a certain type of thing, then you want it to be like those things, you know? And so there's that, uh, you know, an artist can actually get caught in that trap, right? Where it's essentially producing the same thing because that's what the, you know. so, so I think that, that, you know, in summary, I just think that they're very separate you know, undertakings and and um, the artist's you know, I guess job, right, is somehow to juggle those two things, right, and, and remain an artist, right, as a, as opposed to you know, a producer of certain types of commodities, mm -hmm. right. But that's maybe a romantic view. I don't know. You know <laughs> So, so um, I'm uh, I'm almost an interloper um, in the room. Um, I have a love for African art, which is um, it, it comes out of from where I'm from. I'm from the Caribbean, and the connection to Africa is uh, central a lot of the things that we, um, as a, an area, mm -hmm. has you know, come Co from Co 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 So, um, <coughs> and, and I, 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 I do collect uh, Jamaican art in particular. Uh, and often I have wondered, and this, this applies to any one who decides to embark on, not just collecting for commercial reasons, <coughs> but uh, for fulfillment and enjoyment. Um, why, um, why, why would someone, for example, buy an entire, I mean, I know people who have bought an artist, I said, whatever you produce in the next five years, I'll buy. Okay. So when you consider that this is widespread, it's very hard to delineate the influences, you know, what is influencing one, right? Because you you may be you may be influenced by a woman. I value her opinion, um, and that may be the little bit of the commercial side of me talk thinking. But you can't really separate them, right? Well, I can't. Art has to speak to me. It doesn't really matter that you have a body of work over ten years, which looks all the same. You know, I mean. Our art is, well, certainly at the level it is now, is still relatively new, mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know, why would somebody buy, uh, why would they look at Warhol and, you know, I don't know, tins of soup or whatever f over, a, o over a period, or, or all the pop art, and, which are essentially the same. It's because it actually says something to them, and it says something to them of the time, whether you were in that time or not, um, so, I, I find it difficult, some of these conversations, to understand how can you separate all these things. Because the influences are multitude, right? There are lots of influences. There's commercial influences, there is peer or, mm -hmm. you know, my curator friends, um, uh, mm -hmm. some, uh, you know, artists. But essentially, you buy things that speak to you, right? So, you can't really separate them out. I mean, of course, there's always thinking, okay, well, if these artists here, I feel something coming from them, why would I pick that one instead mm -hmm. of another, right? I mean, assuming you don't have unlimited resources. Uh, and maybe that's where some of these things that you're talking about come into play. But generally speaking, you're influenced by the work. I don't look for what an artist tells me. I feel what I feel when I, when I look at it. So 
the onus really isn't really on the artist. The artist will do whatever the artist does. Right? How it impacts me and anybody else in this room is uh, completely individualistic. Okay. Right? And it may be that I like your body of work complete. It may be that I like that carving. I didn't know it was you, but I still like the carving. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I would say um, that the influences, uh, they come from lots of different directions. Um, I think it's, it's difficult and probably even could lead you down the wrong track if you start to try and separate them all out um, rather than looking at it holistically and just saying that, you know what, this piece of art, it is something which you know, makes me feel a certain way. It happens to be all yours. <laughs> it happens to be, you know, over a 10 year period. It happens to be a similar style. Your style is evident. I mean, I, 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 I've not known you, and I hold my hand, I've not known you until today. Um, and I can see by looking around, there's a narrative. Uh, whether I will identify it again next time around, we will see, but I can tell that there's a narrative here. So that's kind of how I'd like to present the kind of art on the art bias side. Interesting. Um, and just to sort of write on what he said, this was a conversation we are having earlier on that I personally don't think that art needs to mean something from the artist all the time and sometimes it's the interaction so the buyer or the collector or the viewer also has a responsibility or even just some sort of duty to say okay you know what what does this say to me and that's also an, a very very valid and interesting sort of view on collecting so that i think beyond like what he said almost contrasts what you said from the, like that's a very romantic view on, on things right it doesn't contrast it just it was one part yeah it was one part of what was yeah yeah it was just one part because the, the why yeah the why is always mm. the why it's very why important is, yeah it's different yeah yeah but then even with illuminate i mean it's just you know it's where where you are but i wonder where what fail what failures would have happened to get to the point where at, at the presentation level as an artist, having gone through whatever it is you're going through to produce, to get to a point where you then bear yourself, whether it's to a collector, whether it's to a gallerist, whether it's whatever, and they say, I want, I want, to, I want something new, right? Because what, what is that? So he that is, so the art that is there, what is old because it looks the same, you know? Yeah. So there's so, so there's so many, um, there's, I, I would say there's slight abuse, but it's not necessarily, um, there's no one to point to because I think that we must demand things of each other. So um, he's asked, the, he's, he's, retort, he's retorted now. Mm. I wonder whether he did at the time because, like, what, do you, what exactly are you looking for? Mm. Because people need to also be taught how to look. Mm -hmm. people, we, have to be, we have to teach ourselves how to look. The artist also has to agree when he's done, he or she's done. Because I also feel like artists also go into the curation mm -hmm. in many ways. Because where does your work end? end is it yeah. with the production? And then you leave the audience to be free to yeah, interpret. Pretty, yeah. The curator's style is different. My style is very much like, I have nothing to say to you. Yeah. I don't feel the artist has to even come. This is for this, and this is why our talks are not even about the. It's not even oh, about explaining the art. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You need to, we all need to kind of take responsibility for learning and, and forming our own true opinions and maybe even arguing them out. You argue them out through money because you can, I can say to it, okay, and it's interesting you said that about the influence. So obviously I'm influential, but I've never influenced. The most I do or have done, at least my friends, is that I can only invite you to my environment. I will never actively say, this yeah, that, that yeah. as it's never been done and i think that's my own personal response and i think that's the responsibility of the galleries is to just create access and create an environment for the person the viewer the buyer collector what you want to call mm. to to, tr to test themselves to see if they can feel if they can feel if they can even connect but that is not my job it's not the artist's job to help a viewer connect yeah. It's not my job to be able to connect because I've connected, you've connected, you've made the work. I've connected mm -hmm. by loving it yeah, enough to, to show it. Con to show consume it. myself with it. Yeah. 
And so I think holding each other accountable, but in every case, it's always a, it's a very individual, holding each other accountable throughout so that we, again, go back to what the whole point of creation, creating was, is expressing, being vulnerable, being vulnerable, that's what yeah, this is yeah. all about, right? For the person who is releasing dollars he should not be spending because he's now in a trance, he's vulnerable, <laughs> right? Um, the artist who is not sleeping because like this thing has to come out, it has to come out, um, to the middleman who is also you know, contextualizing and telling, retelling stories. Mm -hmm. There's vu is vulnerability throughout. So, sorry. But well, uh, yeah, I want to just, uh, uh, commend this room full of romantics. <laughs> speaks to me yeah. But there is a world where art is a commodity. Yeah. There is an industry that buys art, art yeah. on an industrial scale uh, and sells it. And the entire purpose is to speculate as to what its value would be. And that does rub off on what people do. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you know, these are all parts of the same world. And I suppose really it's a question the artist ultimately has to answer for themselves mm -hmm. in terms of what they want to produce and why they are producing. Interesting. It is, it is a Keynesian beauty contest. Yeah. You choose, <laughs> choose the winner, not who you think is the most beautiful, but who you yeah. think the judges. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's on both sides, right? I mean, the artist may yeah. um, determine, you know, it's, then it's not a judgment. You know, you do what you do. So you may determine that yeah. that's your approach yeah. because you would gain whatever you would want to gain, success, yeah. satisfaction, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, and, and on the same side, the, the buyer can. And, and, you know, maybe not you, but the, the curator also could play that. You know, the, the world and people often. In fact, let me ask you this. If you made these paintings and nobody saw them, mm -hmm. right, would you change what you do? No. No. So really, the, the work is, um, is about the work. Mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't really be then so much about well, what I think of it or how much I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah. Right? However, you have to also accept that sometimes people don't know what they like until they see it. Absolutely. So yeah. it needs to be put out there or yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, they may not like it. Uh, they, may, they, may take, they may take you 10 times. Mm. And I don't believe you. Let me be clear about what I don't believe. Okay. I can believe that you don't care if people buy it. But I don't believe that there's any artist who produces art Okay. Okay. In terms of saying and it, okay. I did the difference um, because there are certain works that if you, why um, some people prefer to visit an artist studio is because they know that all artists don't show their works to people. You see the works they have outside. It's not up to the work they have in their studio that they decided not to. Even if you um, turn Google upside down, you can't see those pictures. The picture, same pictures are not even on their phone. They are not even on their laptop. They just, these works are not for anybody. Not maybe because of their hoping, because some, I, they, when I was, um, uh, when I started, there is this um, saying that uh, you can decide to keep the work that the how many years the spend is how what would determine the value but it's when when i now came into that now yeah, like, it's not about that it's about you just don't want anybody to see those works because you just there is this some are not even finished you just feel that these works are not for anybody that's why you see some would visit your studio they would tell you that even the corners eh anything they see right there, they will tell you open it because they know that we artists we uh, we we just even at times if you want to visit my studio there are certain works i will need to go and hide inside my bedroom because you can't come and knock we'll bring the paintings that are inside there <laughs> they every they would see i have to see everything because you people someone if they say you guys are very funny because you guys will hide paintings in the weirdest places in your studios that you don't want people to see them so that's oh, I know that 
it's the one we want people to see and buy we can show but there are some irrespective of the amount we know or interest we know is going to attract we don't put them out for anybody to see they are for the studio they will remain in the studio and they will be in the studio till god knows when <laughs> thank you sir thank you so, yeah. mr joseph yeah so i think but i wanted to hear from this gentleman I'm, you I'm very ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, you know, just get around weird people. <laughs> 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 now, that's that's the uh, is, is the confusion <laughs> that hits me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I want to like make some meaning out of it. Uh, yeah. So I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I guess we're we're good. Yeah, we are good. This has been a amazing. One more question from who? Uh, it's from someone on Instagram. Okay. Just oh, asking, um, how do you know when a piece is finished? Huh? You're pointing to me. Oh, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, how do you know? I, I, how do you know when the piece is finished? Yeah. Actually, um, um, in certain cases, even after buying the piece for me, I still tell you that the piece is not. I still go to your house and correct something there so i can tomorrow i can look at that painting and say that you know what this painting is still unfinished you don't there is no i don't there is um in regards to completion of a painting i think there's um just a, it's not a one-way thing you can decide that every element is complete but tomorrow morning you can something will tell you that is not complete so some would say there are some things that would say oh, as soon as the painting leaves the studio to the final destination that's when the painting is regarded as a completed yeah. painting yeah. why to me i feel that even if it's at the final location that i know about i can still go there and ask the person i want to work on a particular part so that is my own say too, Mr. Joseph. Here would have might have something else to say about that. Well, my mine is um, almost similar, but I, I think that um, when when you when you continue looking at something, you always see that there, there's room for improvement. There's room for improvement. Done. Yeah. So I just try to um, close my mind. Like yeah. once I once I've like gotten to a point where I think okay, it's okay, then if. I don't think it's okay. Maybe I should go and create something else. Like yeah. I just try not to touch. Uh, what I do, I yeah. on <laughs> I unstretch the painting yeah. and keep it somewhere. Okay. So as for me, because looking at just like yeah. you said, looking at looking at something, mm. you tend to find that like there, there's, there's room some, for yeah, improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Which at times, instead of you moving into the next painting, yeah. you want to experiment it or experiment it mm. on the actual painting. Yeah. So me moving it from the studio mm. or m just removing from view yeah. it's a way i think okay the painting is it's temporarily done, done. Okay. you know the word they temporarily <laughs> yeah. done well, yeah. what i what i do um um because i i have a preference for painting on paper so i just frame immediately and i know that i can't like <laughs> i can't go back Mm. Yeah, so I just free man and close my eyes and I'm like, okay, it's 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 it's, it's done. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. okay so I, I I think um, this has been for me. I've enjoyed having this conversation. Um, it's been very interesting. This is my first time of meeting um, Raji. Um, I happen to also have we have my wife is here. We have um, his work at home, and um, we just recently. Um, we have one friend that's very Ijebu when it comes to buying art, and then we try to we bought one work from from you from somewhere. By the way, there are Ijebu people in the room. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, and um, so we okay we had a friend who's very tight fisted <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to uh, to buying work and then we we got a miniature from a gallery somewhere that had your work to sort of get her really really interested into buying so i personally love your work like i've told you, you. I've, I've been seeing your work for since 2014 so it's been 
really, really nice to actually come to a point from looking, thinking, what's going on with this guy, appreciating it, getting to the point of owning it and now having this one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And then okay. just being in this room with artists I respect, people that I'm just meeting for the first time and hearing what everyone has to say about, you're the man, you're the reason why we're here today and just hearing, like, there's not been a negative comment. Everything has been one getting perspective that I would never have even considered about your work. Rosaline here mentioned something I could never have thought about, the fact that your work celebrates women in a way that most artists in Africa don't. Like, mother and child, mother with firewood, there's always a laboring story, but there's not any of that in your work. So, I mean, that's opened my eye to something that was totally closed off from before. And it's really, really, like, to me, interesting when things like this happen you meet people you get new perspectives on things so it's been a pleasure for me and i hope it's been a pleasure for everyone who's here also so thank you very much thank, uh, you. Yeah. thank you thank you thank you